Hidden inside both Excel and Power BI is a secret Power Query function list that you can bring up while working in the Power Query editor window. Well, that's if you know the magic word. You can use this list much like you might use the Excel function wizard or to create a custom function. Let's take a look. Now I've already loaded an Excel table containing a list of dates in Power Query. Now I want to check whether each date falls in the current year, but I'm not sure what Power Query function I can use to do this. So I can bring up the Power Query function list in a new blank query. Just right click, new query, other sources, and then blank query. In here, you type in the magic word equals hash shared, press enter, and we get a list of all the functions in Power Query. Now this list isn't sorted in alphabetical order, so it's a bit tricky to find the function you're after. But if you want to use it this way, you can simply click in the white space and it brings up some information about that function, including the syntax and an example. But I prefer to use this list when it's sorted. So for that, on the convert tab, we can simply click the into table button. Now that it's a table, we have the filter buttons and we can choose to sort it and we can use the filters and search tools to narrow down the list. Now I want to find a function that checks whether the dates are in the current calendar year. So it's going to be a date function. So let's type in date to filter the list. This gives me a list of all functions that contain the word date. And the function that I want is this one here, date is in current year. So again, clicking in the white space brings up the information about the function. And I can see that it takes a date as the argument and returns a true value if the date is in the current year based on my system time and false if not. Now there are two ways we can use this list. The first is simply as a reference to save you going to Google or Bing and searching for the function that you're after. Once you're done with reading the function information, you can simply right click and delete the query and then go back to your table where you want to use the function. We'll add a column and in here we can just type in the function name based on the date column and click OK. And it's that easy. Let me delete that column. I'm just going to press the delete key and we'll go and look at the other way we can use this list. The other way is to create a custom function for use in other queries. Now you can either right click the function, drill down, that will convert this current query into a function, or you can add it as a new query that'll maintain query one that we can see here with the list of all the functions as is, and we'll just create a new query. Alternatively, if you want to drill down, the other way is to simply click the green function text. That drills it down. Now here I don't want to enter anything. I'm just going to go cancel. This is my custom function. You can see up here it's got the FX symbol. So let's give it a name. We'll give it the super imaginative name, date is in current year. And now I can go back to my table one query and I can use that custom function. So on the add column tab, I can invoke custom function. I can give it a name. So we'll call this current year, choose the function from our list. There it is there. It's picked up the date column. I only have one column, but you can click the drop down and choose a different column. Click OK. And there's the result. 2020 is not in the current year. 2021 is and so on. So you can see it's fairly straightforward to use functions via the shared list. I can go back into this query and go back to the converter to table step. And I still have the list of functions and I can click in the white space to get information. So you can still reference it once it's converted into a custom function. And if I find another function in here that I want to use, I can right click and add it as a new query. So it's always there in the file once you've created a custom function from it. Just keep in mind that it might be cleaner to simply use that shared list as a reference, like I showed you in the first example, rather than clutter up your file by creating lots of custom functions that aren't really required. I hope you found this Power Query technique useful. You can download the file for this lesson from the link here. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more. And why not share it with your friends who might also find it useful? Thanks for watching.